Okay, let's talk a little bit about the uh, different modes and the menu system. So, let's go into menu. The menu system is fairly simple. It's also uh, one of the fastest responding menu systems I've used, so it's very fast. You can tell there's very smooth animations and it's, uh, it's just, uh, I think, a pleasure to use. This is a playback menu. Um, you have delete, slideshow, rotate, protect, rating. You can do delighting after taking the picture, resize, crop, edit, movie. Um, you can choose start point, end point, etc. So uh, now let's go into the shooting mode. So as any uh, Nikon camera, you can go press right to go into there, and left to go into there, and also press OK to go in. So uh, there's exposure mode. This is where you change the mode, the PASM mode. Uh, this is the auto mode, uh, program, shutter priority, after priority, and manual. So this is a little hard to get into um, when you're shooting and suddenly you say, oh, I want to change to uh, shutter priority, you have to do this. And this is easy because it's already on that menu item, but if it isn't, it might take you a few seconds just to change the mode. So I think they could have really done better by putting these modes right here instead of these uh, two relatively useless modes I'll talk about in a little bit. So there's image quality. Um, you can choose one of five. Image size, no reason to leave not leave it at 10 megapixels given the small file size. This is uh, single frame or continuous. Shutter type, you can choose mechanical, which allows you to use faster flash sync. And also when you use very fast shutter speed, it avoids blooming, uh, which is a problem of electronic shutter. So you can do electronic, which makes it completely silent. So this is perfect for taking pictures in the performance or on the street. You can also do electronic high, which is high speed uh, continuous shooting uh, up to, I think, 60 frames per second, if I'm correct. So let's uh, actually let's do mechanical first, just so you can hear the sound. Very soft. So it's very quiet. By the way, you can also change the shutter type with the function button which I think is a misuse of the function button, but let's try electronic. Okay, there's sound turn on, I'm sorry. Now let's turn that off by going into sound settings. You can uncheck these and press OK. So absolutely no sound. Okay, so now let's go back to the menu we were at here. So this is auto power off, remote on duration, assign AEAF lock. These are the options you have. And shutter AE lock. So when you have press, does it lock the exposure? Video mode, NTSC or PAL. HDMI device controls, such as turning TV remote, flicker reduction. 50 or 60 hertz, uh, time zone, date, language, auto image rotation, battery info. This is really nice. Uh, you can tell how much charge is remaining. It doesn't tell you how many shots has been taken with this particular charge, unlike the uh, D7000, but that's okay. Pixel mapping for reducing hot pixels. Firmware version. Um, this is 1.10. Okay, so I just noticed I have gone into the settings menu. So let's start over from here, I'm sorry. So there's format memory card, uh, empty release lock, welcome screen, display brightness. You can change brightness of the monitor and the viewfinder separately. Grid display, on or off, um, sound settings. So auto power off. And mode on duration. We've gone through that. So, sorry about the detour. Let's go back to the shooting menu. So, you were over here. So, metering, you can choose matrix, center weighted, or spot. White balance, you have various modes. There's a preset, you can take a picture to determine white balance. 
ISO sensitivity, you have three ranges you can choose. Also, you can force it into one of these. It goes up to 6400. Picture control, this is shared on Nikon DSLRs. You can select one of these or modify them. So if you go to the right, you can change individual options. Okay, so you can save it or load it from card. Color space, sRGB or Adobe. Active delighting uh, to raise the details in the shadow. Usually I leave it on. Long exposure noise reduction, high ISO noise reduction. Movie sound options, uh, you can change the sensitivity or leave it on auto. Wind noise reduction. Interval timer shooting, this is something common on many Nikon cameras. You can take uh, time-lapse photography, which is pretty cool. Vibration reduction is actually default on active. Usually you should leave it on normal if you're going to pan the camera. So autofocus area mode, there's auto area, which uh, it determines it uh, by itself. Or for more deterministic focusing, I usually use single point. You can also do subject tracking. Uh, let's see how well this is. So let's see. Okay. It's um, not really tracking this. Maybe I'm not using it correctly, but okay, so much for that. Now there's face priority. It detects faces if it's on and it's trying to detect at all times. Built in AF assist. It's a green light in the front. So that's it for the menu system. Um, now onto the modes. So you have at the very top a motion snapshot. Basically it takes a short movie of in a slow motion manner and then it takes a picture at the end. So I mean you might like it um, for family photos or short videos but for day-to-day -day picture taking I find it pretty gimmicky and not useful. This is smart photo selector so it starts taking pictures as soon as you half press the shutter. So you notice something come up here, it fills up the buffer. So it's continuously taking pictures while your fingers have pressed. So it takes about 20 and then it selects five that it deems is that are uh, the best pictures and then it shows it to you and then you can choose which one you want. But really, if you want to do that, you can just take continuous shooting 20 and then get all the 20 pictures and then choose later because SD card is cheap. So not that useful in my opinion. This is uh, photo taking mode. We are still in uh, AF tracking mode so you see this little box in the middle but this is where you do your picture shooting uh, PASM mode or full auto. Now the movie mode you have two modes so when you press the function button you can choose regular HD movie which is how this camera is shooting right now which is 1080 uh, 30p or slow motion. So in slow motion you can do a 400 frame per second video with I think approximately 600 by 200 pixel resolution or you can do 1200 frames per second at an even lower resolution. The 1200 it was pretty useless in my opinion because of the low res but the 400 frame per second is usable and I think it's pretty cool you can shoot various slow motion videos. Everyone of course loves slow motion so um, it shoots it for about five seconds but when expanded out it results in a little bit over a minute. So that's a pretty cool mode. Alright so that's the menu system and the modes of the Nikon V1 camera. I hope you enjoy watching and hope this series of videos has uh, helped you in deciding whether the Nikon V1 is the right camera for you. Okay, bye for now.